into the strategy. We have Fire King Snake Eye again versus regular Snake Eye. It feels like they're just competing for dominance here. It's been the theme of the weekend, and again, the question that I've asked several times is, what does better, Snake Eyes or Fire Kings incorporating Snake Eyes? Well, this match will be very indicative of which of those two decks ultimately reign supreme this weekend. I feel like these two players are at the pinnacle of their deck list. They know what the builds are. They know what's the best interactions. That's why they're here in the finals. Honey starting off with a Bonfire, getting Ash. I think this is a good call because when you open with a Bonfire, usually it could prove to be a weaker hand. But we've seen the fall. We've seen the Diabell Stars follow up and still push the play through. But does Honey have that? I think one thing that's indicative about the way Pac plays is he's so well-tuned for how to use his hand interruptions. He can look at his hand, evaluate the quantity of which he's opened with when going second, place his hand down, watch his opponent play, and instantly know that Bonfire is going to be met with Ash. That was predetermined when he opened his hand. It's an important thing to do. Even though if you're going second, you can look at your hand and kind of predetermine which of your hand interactions you would choose to use based on some of the common sequences. Now, Hani follows up with a normal summon of Poplar. Poplar gets negated by Effect Failure. That graveyard is very, very shiny. Now there's even more follow-up, but now we're looking at the Fire King Island. If only there was a Jorn Lockbird so that we don't have to commit that many cards, but the Snake Eye deck sure. is one deck that definitely can use very few resources to generate a full field of an advantage. And unfortunately for Hani here, he's sending an Oak from the hand, which is not necessarily the most ideal card to destroy. But at least it's a fire attribute. It is, a, well, yes, of course. That's going to add the Sacred um, Fire King Garunix. Sure. Garunix Special Summon. Sure. Effect of Sacred Fire King Garunix. So presumably he's going to destroy Ponix from his deck. Yes. Since there are no Fire King monsters in the graveyard, there's no real value in destroying the ones that would normally just Special Summon another monster. And we're going to be destroying the Ponix. Unfortunately, you know, in one end, you wouldn't be able to do this if you didn't draw the Fire Island, but that Ponix, when it returns back in the opening turn, isn't going to necessarily generate a ton of advantage. He's only going to be able to search the Sanctuary when he summons it next time. Oh, wow. High Sum has already taken one game so far, but that was, of course, from the game loss. So this is the current score update. We have all the matches basically taking off 0-0 with Chris versus uh, Hansei. We have Hani versus Pac that we're seeing right now, and uh, High Sum versus Sam. 1-0. So we see Hida hitting the field. He's yet to yep. use the effect. Well, now he is, of course, on Ash Blossom. The Grunix made its way to the Spell and Trap card zone as a result of Poplar. Sure. And now we see the first Princess, so probably many that we're going to see here in the finals today. Yep. I mean, that's why Ash Blossom Joyous Spring is a little bit of a liability by sharing that fire attribute. So one of the things here is by utilizing the Fire Island uh, to destroy the Oak, he can now special summon it later in the turn with Promethean Princess. Okay. And now having yeah, the Ponix in the graveyard, it kind of makes a lot of sense as to why you destroy that with Karunix. Sure. It put the other level one into the graveyard. Okay, so now we have summoned out the Ponix onto the field. That's going to trigger, and we're going to add a card into our hand. And it seems like we have added Sanctuary. Yeah, a level one that adds some value. Of course, he has the Poplar in his graveyard as well. But there's a little bit of incremental value because now he'll have a face-up card on the field in case he has original simple spoils. Or just the Oak Effect, for example. Oak Effect? Yeah. That's going to be successful. There's not a lot of disruption for that anymore because the Ash Blossom has already been used. It's not negated. And we're going to summon out the Snake Eye Ash. Hani's done a really good job of showcasing how to navigate through hand interactions because although he's been met with both Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler, it doesn't really seem like it's affected him too much. And we're going to special summon out the Snake Eyes Flambear's Dragon through the effect of Ash. I mean, one of the advantages of playing the Fire King package is that you can use the Sanctuary and you know, pay costs. Everything that lives on the field is just another aspect to get access to more Snake Eye cards and using that to pay cost. We're using the effect of Flambear's. And we are putting yeah, the sure. Hita into the Spawn Trap Zone. I think that's going to allow us for a little bit of follow-up later on. Mm -hmm. You have one and a half or two. We've seen a variety of things put into the Spawn yeah. Trap Card Zone. Obviously, IP and SP yeah. are some of the more common ones, but we've seen everything from Link Rebo to Hita. Mm -hmm. The flexibility of Flame, Bar Flame Bar is just fantastic. You can set it up as an interruption. You can not only interrupt yep. 
by actually special summoning something like IP back, bringing back your opponent's Link Rebo is an interruption inherently as well. Yeah, and uh, now we've got into the Salamangra Sunlight Wolf, and the Flamber Dragon has been sent to the grave, but that's going to summon out the Snake Eye Oak and the Ash into the arrow. I'm not sure if you used the effect to add no, anything just here, yet. I think. This was here? Yeah. It was on the end. It was, so here. It was on the end? Was oh, like, it, was, it was just in between? Was oh, okay. Okay. oh, okay, sure. yeah, Just be careful of the zoning it's right there. Checking. I think he wants to yep. potentially add the oak back to his hand, yeah, so he wanted to wait to go into Link Rebo. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to proceed to Link Summon further with uh, different attributes. Cyber Monsters, are we going for the additional draw? And of course we are. I already cut, yep. you, you need that value. And remember, using that particular effect of the Deco Takahitsu will cost 1,000 life points. That 1,000 life points makes the reach a little bit shorter when it comes to the later end combos if you need to deal damage. Here is a copy of IP Mascarena. Looking to the graveyard, we have loaded the graveyard with a copy that of is. the Promethean Princess. So that's a form of follow-up. Uh, I believe there's also a Garunix in the graveyard, so that's another form of follow-up. And not to mention the IP okay. Masquerina yeah, as I well, that can turn to SP or other cards. My turn? Yeah. Draw. Honey just told his Stand teammates by. I made full board through two Main. hand interruptions. Divine Temple of the... Ooh, Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. Ooh, and Hani has the brutal combination of Effect Veiler and Nibiru in his hand. Well, if anyone's going to play through it, it's going to be Pac. Pac has been playing through that time and time again through this entire tournament. Is very comfortable with that. But Hani is also a very skilled player. Will he find the patience and the timing to land those two hand interruptions? Flambear Dragon has been placed into the spell and trap zone through the field spell. Lullaby of Obedience. Ooh, Ooh here it this is. is the card that we've been waiting for. Lullaby of Obedience. You can call any card in your opponent's deck. You know, if they have it, they have to give it to you. Either summon it onto the field or give it to you in your hand. And it allows you to search whether it's Poplar or Ash. Either of them oh, would trigger their effects. So good. Not only are they sharing graveyard now, they're now yes. more or less sharing the deck. So now you would talk about cards like Reinforcements of the Army, Bonfire that allow you to search your deck for specific monsters. When you activate exactly. Lullaby of Obedience, it's almost like you go from three copies of Bonfire to six copies of Bonfire in these mirror match results. Yeah. Interestingly enough, you, if you say you called sure. the Poplar, you'd be adding a Poplar into your hand. You can just activate and just summon yes, it up for precisely. free as well. It's crazy. It sort of mitigates the ability of your opponent to decide whether or not it goes into the field or hand with a card like Poplar. Mm. But Lullaby of Obedience does cost life points to activate. It's quite a steep cost nonetheless. Worth it. You need help, Heisman, or no? No. You good, Chris? Okay. Uh, Honey, while right, yeah, waiting for Pack to play, just checking up on his teammates. So this is Team I'll YCS. Devil Star, uh, on the special summon, uh, using the Ash to send to the grave and get that special. That does not activate. Now we're going to activate the Devil Star to set one of those sinful spoil speller traps into the spell trap zone. That's going to be the original. Original. Curious here if Hani is going to respond with the IP Mascarena. So we can use SP to banish it, but there are ways to kind of recur it as long as we have additional copies of the wanted secret sinful spoils to keep that into rotation. Thank you. Hani's very patient with his IP mask, right? even though there are hey, monsters yeah. being developed. I, yeah. I think we're going to use the effect now to use Diko Takahizo to draw a card, so that's going to put them at equal life points, 6,000 six. to 6,000. The value of getting a Sunlight Wolf effect, a Heat Soul effect on your turn, and then a Heat Soul effect on your opponent's turn, it's just one of these decks where it seemingly plays to the board while replenishing your hand. It's a really brutal one-two combo. Mm -hmm. Effect of IP. Sure. We're going to use the effect of IP Mascarena. With the Link Rebo, we're going to summon out the SP I'm Little Knight. Thinking. That's going to have a trigger effect because it did use an extra uh, deck monster. And uh, one thing to note is that it doesn't uh, just banish cards on the field, it also banishes okay, cards so in the graveyard. So let's see where he goes with this SP. It is going to be for that original Sinful Spoils. Banish. That was my instinct when he okay. originally said it with the Black Witch. Uh, well, well, even though you couldn't get stopped, say, by an Ash Blossom, you do commit it to the field and uh, risk getting hit by other cards. One thing to note, because Hani did special summon, Pack is now able to summon the Flame Burge from his Spell and Trap card zone with the Divine Temple. And that is the opponent's turn, so it can have an additional fall, but just taking away opponent's monsters, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Oh, this is a, an interesting situation. You can feel the tenseness here. This is a very critical turn. I mean, that was the IP Mask Arena activating, and we're now still a pack trying to push through. It's a bit unfortunate. Are we going to use the Princess in the graveyard to kind of knock out the monster, target the other Ash, and destroy something? I don't think there's an Amble Whale to follow up on that. There is a Garunix, however, for the destruction. That's good. Okay. That's your Griff. Finding the line to get that OTK. Honey has allowed Pack to continue play, so the open game state now returns to Pack. Cards in hand? Three. Three? Three cards Three. in hand. Great resource management. Yeah, we know one of them is the Nibiru that we saw. We know one of them is the Oak that he added back to his hand the previous turn. And the other is the mystery card that he got off of Heat uh, Merge attack over a Little Knight. Take 14. Flamber, you're going to the battle phase, attacking over the Lunite. I mean, don't commit into anything that could just break your own board. So, SP Lunite usually forces that battle phase. I'm thinking. Was it Flamber just attack back to you? What are you talking about? What is that? I no. declare an attack. You There's no effect. Attack. No, I, okay. That's right. Snake, the temple summoned the flamber swung yep. in time. Yeah. That's why the temple is so, just so effective. Cards in end? Three? Thank you. Yeah, the Divine Temple, I commented on this yesterday. It's a card that you read. It doesn't seemingly line up as a powerful field spell in comparison to some of the other ones that we've seen popularized over the course of the last couple of years. But then when you actually watch it play, it slots in so beautifully with the Snake Eye strategy. Take 200. Yes. Yeah, it's just so good that you get the free mo monster that just summoned out. You can place a monster Flambridge and then summon out later on. You can use that to kind of follow through with Nibiru yeah. just in mm -hmm. case. And just having that backup strategy available once you get hit by those hand disruption, just play right through it. <laughs> That's really the critical interaction to me is the way to play through Nibiru. Well, also just lighting up well in the mirror match because you can sure. obviously there's special summoning on both players turns back and forth. Yep. Um, Hondax has been summoned on the field. I don't think there's any further activation. The Sanctuary is gone. The Fire King Island is already on the field. Snake Eye Ash, decline attack. Okay. Snake Eye Ash is going to attack over the Ponix that only Main has 200 two. fence. Main phase two. Can I see my grave? Yeah. <laughs> That's a funny question. Can I see my grave? Can I see my graveyard? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. <laughs> That's popular. Yep, perfect. Perfect, so he says. Summons. So Look at that. Pack is calculating Let's the number go. of summons, evaluating uh, what he needs uh, to do uh, next. Flamberge, I will target your... Uh, uh, Flamberge. Uh, yep. We're going to put away the princess. If he passes his turn, this is going to be quite interesting, but we're going to take the two monsters that were left on the field, the Diabell Star and the Ash, no. And we're going to look at the extra yeah, Okay, so it goes to his grave. Thank you. That was not his Ash. Remember, that was from the Lullaby of Obedience. Yes, of course, the Lullaby of Obedience. That's a card that we were hinting at throughout the weekend whenever Pac was playing, but we had yet to actually see it in the future match area. As a matter of fact, his entire team is playing three copies. Mm -hmm. And now that the Fine Bush has pushed that um, Promethean Princess into the back, the special summon of the Hita is not going to be disrupted, and we're going to special summon back a Poplar from Hani's graveyard. I saw my one game one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Pac just realized. Just to choose to go first on this one. I don't think we're gonna do anything that spicy. Where we're gonna switch it. Yeah, you can go first. But that, I feel like the decks natural are just so okay. good against each other just by base. And right now we're just doing minor technical sides just to get that slight edge. Bonfire. And we're getting Ash on the bonfire. Thank you. Oh, is there a follow up on this? Well, it could potentially be. Crossout designator. Call Ash. Yes, it is. Sure. Good call. Oh, and looking at the current table scores, table A with uh, Chris taking one over Hanse. B, of course, we have Hani taking the first game against Pac. And C, they're still going at their, technically their first game, but game two uh, is Haisam versus Pac with one on Haisam. The team Supreme Pro, really an uphill battle at this point. Yeah, this is a very significant advantage. You have to win two in a row for all the players. I'm gonna win my match, honey. Sounds oh. like Hassan just said he's gonna he's gonna win his match. Wow, is that three in? hand interactions? That was Ash Baylor and Mourner. And Mourner could deal damage if you remove that monster as well. I mean Mourner has been seeing more and more play. A lot of these top cut deck lists have included Mourner now. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah it's a card like we commented on earlier that with the rise in popularity of Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence, it slots in really great as a 7th, 8th, or even ninth copy, and it's not going to be necessarily as popular across the entire field this weekend, so it also gives you a little bit of resistance against Crossout Designator if a player is elected not to include it in their deck. That's right. I think it's a wonderful hand interruption because it also doesn't align up the attributes as well. You're not going to expect to see the, uh, the Wind Charmer exactly. <laughs> to be put in to kind of take control of the situation here. Now, speaking of charmers, we have Hita, Ash and we're going to target the Ash Blossom. Honey, actually running pretty low on cards. I mean, you're committing quite a few hand disruptions. That's three now, down to two cards left in hand. Are we able to establish a field on pack side now that can disrupt three cards? Yeah, of course, it's one of the liabilities of playing hand interruptions whose attributes line up in this way. I mean, you still have to play Ash. It's one of the best ones. Honey says it's looking okay, so those two cards in hand must be pretty powerful cards if he's saying that things look okay. Is it a fourth hand interaction? That would be crazy. It could be uh, infinite impermanence. It could be something that's still usable. And it's a ghost bulb. So many of those sisters coming down. Oh, wow. We've gone through Earth, we've gone Some through ash. Fire, we've gone through oh, all of us. Oh, oh, no. That was really cool. That was a probably be, oh. Again, say, even in person, this is, this is an overload of hand interruption. I was about to say, when Hani said, oh, it's looking pretty good, maybe it was a bluff. <laughs> maybe his hand was just five hand interactions. It depends on what pack draws now. I mean, he had to pass. Yeah, there's a variety of... Oh! Is, does he have a sixth one? No. No! That was incredible. Hand interruption into hand interruption. We've gone through most of the attribute table now. And another I think that's all the cards in his hand. <laughs> oh. The ash has been taken God, out, bro. okay. But I'm is it God. over just I don't think it's over that's every <laughs> that's almost every attribute. Except for dark. <laughs> except for dark. Wow, honey's just gonna tap the top of his deck. I mean we are in Las Vegas of all places, right? Yep. One card up the top, could it be Ash? Could it be Poplar? I mean there's so many different cards. Attack, attack. Both players committing every single card. I think we're in a simplified game state at this point. Yeah, honey, it can be Okay, He's so excited to draw. He could not be more enthusiastic here. You just saw him just, yes, please attack. Please I just want to see the next card on my top of my deck. I know there's nothing that you really can do from here. He is begging his deck to answer his call. He's begging Asher his Bonfire. deck. Asher Bonfire. Asher Bonfire. He's calling it right now. He needs it to take this one. Based on the theme here, you should probably specify not Ash Blossom. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely not the Ash we want. Because he knows that pack is locked into fire monsters, and although he can continue making plays, none of them are really overwhelmingly powerful. Heat has already been used, for example. Exactly, and the key right now is that Honey survived the turn. The art of survival play comes into play once again. So the interruption here, the pack could, you know, really could potentially set up. Yeah, I think this makes a lot of sense. Is just assume there's no topic because you can go to like Phoenix to put a fire on the field. Did I? Honey, get it! Oh, if I he if could I close knew, out the game if he has it. If but I knew anything about Honey, he no. would it. We're going into game three. That was incredible. I mean, I the wonder heck? what the score is right now on Hansei's table. We won the bull, Hyson. This is the most absurd hand I've ever seen in my life. Okay, well, Honey seems pretty confident All with his hand. Snake eye ash, activate the ability. And uh, current table scores uh, at zero. position number A, matter. we oh, have right. uh, Chris with oh, one sorry. and Hansei at zero. That's, That's if their game finishes, we might not That's see true. the conclusion mm. of this. Table B, one game apiece with Honey and Pack, and of course table C, Haisam with the two and O. Oh Honey is feeling pretty good. You can see in his hand he has a crossout designator, and he has a copy of Summon Limit. Oh, that could completely shut out Think Pack. So. Hopefully the siding patterns work out. We Hopefully we practice this. Should I even be summoning them? Oh, they're yeah, getting sure. adv advice from each sure. other. Yeah. Just yeah. for the extra assurance, extra confidence, you know, it's nice to have a friend to back you up. You know, typically when Drone Lockbright hits the graveyard, it can be pretty backbreaking. Honey yep. immediately is like, yep, totally fine. My hand is that powerful worry, right now. Don't mm -hmm. worry, I'm going in. Oh, I'm not worried, bro. I'm about to nip him for his life, bro. Don't disrespect me <laughs> like that again, bro. <laughs> now, we've seen those uh, drone loppers come down uh, for Team Supreme Pro previously, and oh. it was against the Snake Eye Fire King. It has long-term precautions where you do not get the full setup, and they get to, to. find to the what? moment where they can strike. The Wait, why, why? Wait, wait. Think about it. Think about it. Okay. 
I sometimes like, slow it down, honey. I know your hand is that powerful, but let's just make sure everything's lining up properly. Let's be, let's not get too eager now. It's like a bit of a guardian angel. Like, how are you getting the flame bridge right Like, let's just slow it down a little bit. Think about the position that we're in. You have summon limit? That's fine. Just don't do nothing. That's good for me. Pack making the read that there's a summon limit available. That's impressive. Pack just basically can read his entire hand because of that, which is an important thing to note, by the way. That is a true Yu-Gi-Oh skill. Being able to read what your, what cards your opponent has. And these two? Pack staying calm, even though that he knows that there is going to be a limit on his summons coming up later on. Promethean Princess? Yep. And we're going to go into the Promethean Princess. These players are playing at a really blistering pace, or at least Hani is, and they have 37 minutes left in the round, so this isn't because time is closing. They are just that excited. They're just that excited, that confident. What do you want me to end on? You think I should just end on this? Because you can't even beat this, dude. <laughs> this. Now this particular field, yeah, only right? the Promethean Princess and the um, Snake yeah, Eye for sure. follow up and Ash. Like, it's just game. Sure. And if they have the follow-up of the trap card uh, in the actually, back, actually, it's going to be very, very what, bro? difficult. So he has a wanted set that he got off of Black Witch, and of course he, we know he has Summon Limit in his hand. Pack even knows he has Summon Limit in his hand. Honey is super stars. confident now. Not committing any further, knowing exactly what he has, knowing how strong his current field is. No, dude. Thinking that he has this. You see, the problem here is looking at Pack's list, he doesn't actually have any outs to summon limit. That is, that is very true. And there I, may be, there may be some clever siding that could have prevented this. I think there's the possibility that Hani and Pack just know each other's deck list because yeah. they, you know, sometimes they build decks together. And as a result, mm -hmm. Hani's confidence is that with knowledge of what is in Pack's deck, summon limit might just be outright game. Fight. We're getting a Poplar effect. Oh, hold on. There may be something Pack can do. Pack staying really calm, not giving the read to, to Hani. Hani already smiling, super confident, very vocal about the position he's in. And we're going to see the summon limit. Pack says it's fine with me. And we're going to get the Divine Temple of Snake Eye. We won. We won. Let's go. It sounds like a table A. It's come to an end. That has concluded no the game at a different table. No Honey gets up from his.